Hello and welcome to another session of Dirt. Today what we're going to consider is how can I explain my judgement in my conclusions. So rather than just making a judgement and saying this is the most important factor or I think he died this way, we're going to explain why we've made that judgement. So let's start with a basic conclusion. In conclusion, I think Harold died by getting an arrow in his eye. Now what we need to do is explain why we think Harold died by getting an arrow in his eye, rather than the other option, which was that he might have been killed by a sword. So we'll start off by pointing out that some sources, like source A, actually suggest he was killed by a sword. And we say, although some sources, such as source A, suggest he was killed by a sword, now we need to explain why we think these sources that suggest he was killed by a sword are less likely than him getting an arrow in his eye. Well, let's have a look at source A. We know it's written by a Norman monk, and it talks about the fact that he is sword, and they cut the, his head, they cut open his stomach, they're hacking up his legs. Well, why do we think this is less likely than the idea that he was killed with an arrow in his eye? Possibly because this was written by a Norman monk. Who won the Battle of Hastings? William of Normandy. Is it possible that this Norman monk, so a religious man who wasn't actually at the battle, might be exaggerating how exciting the sound of the battle is and the way that Harold died in order to make William of Normandy sound better? So he's exaggerating the blood and the gore and the way that Harold died to make William of Normandy sound like a really brave warrior and a really good fighter and king. Well then we need to explain that in our conclusion. Although some sources such as source A suggest he was killed by a sword, although some sources such as source A suggest he was killed by a sword, these sources are not very reliable, which means we can't trust them. For example, source A is written by a Norman. He might be exaggerating how violent Harold's death was to make William of Normandy sound like a better warrior. So we've explained why we're not convinced by the other sources. Now we need to explain why we're more convinced that he was killed by an arrow in his eye. So we can add the sentence... It seems more likely that Harold was killed by an arrow in his eye because... Well, why is it more likely that he was killed by an arrow in his eye? You need to explain what makes these sources that say he was killed by an arrow in his eye more reliable. For example, source whichever source you happen to choose, is written by... Who is it written by? And they don't have any reason to exaggerate or be one-sided because... So you need to choose a source that you know is written by someone who doesn't have a reason to exaggerate or be one-sided and explain why don't they have a reason to be one-sided. So for example, source E. Who is source E written by? Do they have any reason to take a side, either William's side or Harold's side? Do they have any real reason to exaggerate? How reliable, how trustworthy does this make the source? So in a perfect conclusion, if you're trying to explain, you need to say over what judgement you're making, why you're not convinced by the other side of the argument, and why you're more convinced by the side of the argument you've chosen. So, for example, in this case, uh, why you're more convinced that he was killed by an arrow in his eye. What made those sources more reliable? Have a go at doing this dirt in your book in green pen, explaining your judgment.